All right, a little bit about what we saw last Saturday as LSU improves to 7-0 and on the season. Quarterback Joe Burrow goes for 327 and four scores. One of those scores, along with a Derek Dillon, became a school record for the season, the 29th thrown by LSU's senior signal caller going into the eighth game of the season versus Auburn. But in a game that the offense was the record breaker and Burrow gets the headlines, I really thought that the defense yeah. stood out. Three first-half takeaways. And, T-Bob, when you look at these two safeties – in Delpit and Jacoby Stevens. And one thing um, that, that I was remembering on is that Todd Harris was in the same recruiting class as these guys. Wow. So you get Harris, Delpit, and Stevens in one recruiting class, which has played out to be three of the top five safeties, maybe in college football playing right now. If Harris is healthy, he's on the field playing alongside those two. And I love the way that Aranda used Delpit and, and Stevens on Saturday. Delpit plays so much more aggressive and has so much more of an impact on the game when he's in the box yeah, when he's playing around the line of scrimmage, and then you have you have that that playmaker that you thought Delpit was for you at the beginning of last year in Jacoby Stevens. Yeah, that's kind of an X factor that you can move all over the field. I mean, the one-handed interception jumps out, but some of the tackles he made, and also in Stevens too. They, I mean, the coverage was the big knock on him, right? And the coverage has improved, and uh, and now he's made people pay a couple times. Which, dude, look at Jacoby's two picks. You're talking about some hyper athletic picks. I mean. That one Saturday when that ball left Schrader's hand, I thought it was good. Like I, I thought, I thought it was yeah. wow. I was like, wow, great touch. You put it right over Stevens' head, and then all of a sudden, Stevens is just flying through the air and takes it down one handed. And the athleticism's never been the question because they've tried to find spots with him where where you think and, and and look at athletes. They played him at wide receiver. They played him at the slot. They tried him at cornerback. They tried him at safety. They've tried him at different spots all over the field, and finally, they now have a spot for him, even though he's so versatile that you can yeah. still move him all over the field. Um, and, and, and so it's weird, right? Because when you have two guys who you both, you, you want to take advantage of both their skill sets and you want to be on the field at the same time. Um, I think it took Dave Aranda a while to figure out how to do that. And now they are, well, they're figuring that out without sacrificing other areas. I will be rewatching the game uh, in depth today. And so that's going to be one of my main points of focus is like, what did Dave Aranda do so differently this time around to get, Stevens and Delpit in those positions here's to succeed. Ogeron, here's Ogeron talking about his defensive effort. I think that, you know, like, like I'm saying, the defense uh, came to play today. The turnovers really helped us, uh, made, it, made it hard for their offense. I thought we did very well on defense, and it gave us a little time for the offense to get, get hot. I thought they got hot in the third quarter of the deep balls. Obviously, we took Joe out with about nine minutes left. We could have scored more points, but we, want, we didn't want nothing to happen. Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, I thought he maybe stayed in like a series too long. Yeah, I, I, you, could, you could have taken him out even uh, – even sooner, for all I care. Um, it, it is interesting to me that on a day in which the LSU offense uh, struggles or has an off day, uh, Burrow still goes for that many touchdowns and yards. And, like, they cover 19 on the road. Like, the it's the sign around, of the times. And I think that the, <laughs> the, the discussion around the offensive struggles is solely based on the red zone early on. I mean, they get to the red zone three straight times. They come away with sh three straight field goals. Yeah. They still score. Sketchy-looking field goals, too. More, 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 more on that later. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Our guys get, get the yips at the wrong time <laughs> of the year, bro. Easy, Kate. <laughs> Going into November, bro, you're and, supposed to have this figured out. And, Let me just say yeah, one, yeah, real, sorry, one, sorry, one thing on, on, on the red zone was I thought it was a very positive sign that Terrace Marshall was dressed out again for the second straight week. You saw him on the sidelines dressed out. I think that LSU, while they've been effective with him out of the lineup, I saw a stat where Marshall has seven red zone catches this year. Six of them are for scores. Yeah. I mean, you talk about his size advantage that he has in the area when the field becomes compressed. I think it looks like you're going to get him back on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it looks like he's going to – didn't – he had the – near similar surgery that Tua had, right? I mean, I don't think he had the tightrope, but he had one of these quick – Yeah, he had I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, recovery I haven't understood what – Yeah. It, where, where he's expected back in a, in a matter of weeks. And remember, he had the surgery the Sunday morning after the Vanderbilt game, and by all accounts, he's ahead of schedule, and I think the target date was Bama, and that they think that they can get him a couple of reps – here this weekend. So I think once he works back into the fold, you still got Jefferson, you still got Chase. Those guys on Saturday, Jefferson had eight catches for 89 and a score. Chase had five catches for 48 and a score. And then you add Marshall into the mix with this guy and his size advantage in the red zone. I think that while, yeah, it's it's easy to talk about that on Monday morning that the red zone offense is concerning. If they didn't you, get oh touchdowns. If you, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, it's not that big of a deal. I think it's 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 a couple of things in execution where they were a click off, a step off, 
a hair off in timing here. But that's, I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm willing to look at all the data. Marshall, well, so that's a thing, man. Okay, so two points. First off, yes, Marshall was leading the nation in touchdowns when he got hurt. Nobody forget that. Secondly, um, going into this game, y'all, LSU was 34 of 34 in the red zone with 29 touchdowns. That's so good. And they still scored every trip this <laughs> time. So like, like, good. like, like, this is the exception, not the rule. If you're, like, what am I, uh, the, the, the same doctor buddy that the ortho that I talked to about the two of the Alabama grad, he tried coming at me with like, I mean, LSU, a little weakness today. Huh? It, looked, it looked a little bad in the red zone. And I hit him with that stat. I'm like, I hit him with that stat. I'm like, what are we, like, what are we even talking about here, dude? I love how nervous they are. Three possessions against Mississippi state do not outweigh six games of red zone dominance. So I'm not worried about that at all. Though, look, a lot of people are trying to put the Zion injury on us. We're talking trash about AD getting hurt. Play the tape. I specifically said we weren't going to make fun of AD because we didn't want the karmic justice, okay? That's not true. I will take responsibility for LSU's red zone struggles on Saturday because I said that I hoped that they would stall out to get Cade York a little practice. Mm. And what maybe, yep, 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 yep. And and so that is on my and Jeez. But am I wrong? I think Cade York needs a practice. Who's his backup at this point? <laughs> no, no, no. Chill. I mean, I don't know Start if you can do that. Start to get some swings. Here's the deal, though. It, yeah, it's a dangerous road to go that uh, because once you, yeah, once you pull, once you pull, once you go, yeah, I mean, you think he's mentally messed up now. Yeah, what do you do? So that that's, I mean, to be fair, that is the only thing that is concerning on this LSU football team. Right I can now. tell you one more thing that that gives you a little security in the red zone is Thad Moss is coming along, bro. Thad Moss is eighty one is a player. All right, more on LSU and the Saints next year on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Kalana and T Bob. Uh, brought to you daily by Central Plumbing Company. Online, looking forward to our Central Plumbing conversation. 